Adam's Retro Film Reviews, Sunshine 2007. Our sun is dying. Mankind faces extinction. 16 months ago, I, Robert Kappa, and a crew of seven left Earth frozen in a solar winter. Our mission, reignite the sun before it's too late. Welcome to Icarus 2. We have a payload to deliver to the heart of our nearest star. That star is dying. And if it dies, everything dies. There is nothing, literally nothing more important than completing our mission. Are you scared? No. Since the cinemas are closed and the movie industry has shriveled up tighter than a raisin's wasp name, it's about time I took a look back at some of my favourite films from years gone by. This one I didn't even have to choose. This week, Sunshine celebrates its 13th birthday, so... Sounds like a pretty good excuse to put it on again. Written by Alex Garland and directed by Danny Boyle, the pair's second collaboration after 2002's rage-infected masterpiece, 28 Days Later. Sunshine sends us into a future where our sun is dying, and the Earth's last hope rests on the shoulders of an international crew on board a ship strapped to a bomb to reignite the star and save our civilization. The ship, the Icarus 2, is the second attempt to reignite the sun, with the Icarus 1 having gone missing seven years earlier. This fact weighs heavily on Captain Canada, played by Hiroku Sanada, who leads the second ship as it passes beyond communications range of Earth. For the first time in their mission, the small crew of eight is truly on its own. Things appear to be going to plan when Icarus 2 loops the planet Mercury, detecting a previously unheard distress beacon. The distress beacon of the Icarus 1. Despite the strong protests of the ship's engineer Mace, played by an almost unrecognisable Chris Evans, the decision forced the Kappa, the ship's bomb expert, played by a Brian Cox trained Killian Murphy, who comes to the conclusion that two last chances for Earth are better than one, and that they should intercept the Icarus 1. And that's where things start to go wrong. Small mistakes lead to huge catastrophes as Icarus 2's new course forces the crew to make major decisions to determine the success of their mission. The biggest threat appears as the captain from the Icarus 1, Captain Pimbacker, appears to return from the grave, his mind and body corrupted by the light of the sun. His belief that he has been chosen by God driving his violent rampage against his would-be saviours. Sunshine is way more than your standard sci-fi. Sunshine takes a deep, dark look at what makes us human. It pits flesh and blood against force way beyond our comprehension and puts into focus our relationship with God, in this case embodied by the sun. I don't want to get all religious on you, far from it, but what Sunshine offers is a story that, on the surface, is an incredible sci-fi thriller, full of questions of morality and absolutely breathtaking special effects, but Rather than stop there, it pushes its themes into the next world. Take Searle, uh, played by Cliff Curtis, the ship's psychologist. Throughout the journey, Searle has become increasingly obsessed with the sun and its light. We first see him in the observation lounge, testing his limits as to how much sunshine he can expose himself to. His time and exposure to the light increasing off screen, with his skin blistering and peeling around his sunglass tan lines. He's finding faith. He, like Pinbacker is finding meaning in the light and losing himself to it. Kappa and furthermore Mace take the opposite approach. They focus on what needs to be done and though they clash often, every decision they make is to complete the mission and save the world. Mace, the more pragmatic of the two, makes the hard decisions. In fact, though everyone argues against him, it's pretty clear that he is right virtually the whole way through the film. It's just a shame he's a bit of a git about it. Boyle has quoted 2001 A Space Odyssey, Solaris and Alien as influences on the film, and it's easy to see where they crop up. Tight, claustrophobic spaceship corridors set the scene while the human crew begin to question their morality in an unbelievably stressful environment. I would go so far as to add Silent Running and Event Horizon to the reference pool too, but Sunshine is absolutely its own thing. Sunshine was considered a flop on its release, but home viewing has seen it rise in popularity and long may it continue. Sunshine is up there with my favourite sci-fi stories of all time. 
They even get a bit teary towards the end. The music too is incredible. John Murphy's score, along with Underworld, has been recycled to death, but it really shines in this film. Watch it, watch it, watch it. So if you wake up one morning and it's a particularly beautiful day, you'll know we made it.